Hey, what's good, everyone? Local Ice Man here. It's time to do a series of videos regarding circle checks because inspecting the machine is very important. It's a video I've been meaning to get to for quite some time. I just didn't know how to present the information. It's a lot of information and didn't know really how to present it all. But since I've been training some new drivers and one of them asked for a startup checklist of how to get the machine started and into ice for sensor mode, so to say. So I have that kind of made up, but I felt like I should do a, a pre-inspection checklist as well as a general circle check before I really get into that. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna break this up into three different videos. The first video is gonna be Zamboni's general and detailed circle check. The second video is gonna be on my general checklist as well as a pre and post one checklist that's made for our drivers. And the third video will be that startup checklist to how to get the machine started into ice for mode, so to say. Again, for this video, we're gonna do Zamboni's general and detailed circle checks. And these circle checks are available in your shop book if you have an older book, you may not have the updated one, you go to Zamboni.com, Resource Center, and put yourself out some circle checks. Again, the general and detail one. The detail one has three different diagrams it refers to. We'll check that here in a minute, but first let's go ahead and start with the general checklist right here. General circle check. You got your auger systems. Auger systems should be good condition, free of snow, ice, and obstructions. Fuel supply should be assessed prior to resurfacing. Towel should be clean and free of tears. Squeegee should not have tears or cracks and should have a snug fit form end to end. Ice making water supply should be sufficient for resurfacing and have steady and even distribution from the pipe. I'm gonna say that, cause it's kinda come up right here, that's the Zamboni 500 we have right here. I need to clean that distribution pipe out. I noticed that when we're laying water with that machine, it doesn't lay as much as the 546 right here cause I think there's some restriction going on in there. So that's a good one. Wash water should have a steady flow and a clean basket. Bar brush should be firmly attached to the unit and show no signs of damage. Basic fluid level should be sufficient and not in need of change. Belt and hoses should be tight fitting without wear and no signs of aging, leaking, or other need of replacement. Oil and filter should be monitored for replacement as recommended by the machine service manual. Grease horizontal auger bearings on a daily basis, and that's also true with your vertical bottom auger. You want to hit that auger bearing on a daily basis. That's because of moisture issues. The horizontal auger, you got snow down there. If you're washing the machine out after each cut, as well as your vertical auger, if you're washing out at each cut, it's not as big an issue. You definitely should be greasing them. But if you're not washing them out, you got to be greasing those bearings every day because you're going to have constant moisture going into those bearings. So make sure you're greasing your horizontal auger bearings and your vertical one on the bottom on a daily basis. That top one can be done once a week. Drain water takes at the end of each day. That's something that, again, depends on your rink. I don't think we don't drain our water tanks at the end of the day. So we do pretty heavy flood at night. There may be a quarter tank in there. It'll sit six, seven hours overnight or something. No. If your machine's gonna sit for a week, you wanna empty your water tank. But if you're using it every day, I don't think you really need to. But that's my personal opinion, and there's, you know, I'm sure someone else would disagree with me with that. Fuel supply should be turned off at the end of each day for fuel power machines, and that's something we do here. I also turn it off if it sits for a longer period of time. If I happen to get out of here, if there's, I do the cut like at noon or one o'clock, and the next cut's not until 4.45. I will uh, turn in the, the propane tanks off just in case because if a catastrophic leak happens, uh, the water heater sitting right here, I just don't want anything to happen. So if it's gonna be sitting for a long period of time, definitely turn your fuel system on. Ventilation system should be on, active, and air quality tests should be performed per facility schedule. Check under, around, behind active surfacer and observe the condition of the path into and out of the ice resurfacer storage area. Again, that's gonna be rink dependent. You can see on our rink, we just drive basically right onto the ice, you know, 15 feet from the door right here. Snow pit, dipping area condition and path to and from area. And we do hose and clean up the outside the best we can because we dump our snow outside. We get the pine needles. So we're often got the the leaf blower or the hose out there kind of hosing off the main pad and when the snow all melts it usually leaves dirty piles of stuff so we'd like to power wash that off once a year and get the pad nice and clean there so that's something definitely a good thing to check as you know indoors or outdoors evaluate consumables such as fluids and parts which may be showstoppers if not on hand and that's a good one too and that one you know that's a tough one there's a lot of things we get here locally and there's some things that you have to order through Zamboni. I, 
you know, like you should keep some bearings on hand. Maybe it's something that you probably want to order, you know, an extra squeegee, an extra towel. Definitely a good thing to, to keep in mind, though, is keep parts and definitely fluids, fluids, oil, coolant, maybe a spare belt, things like that. You probably definitely want to have on the shelf there. All right, circle check detail. I'm going to go through these things relatively quickly. Just spend a little time on each one. Just enough time to slip a picture in there to point out what I'm talking about. There's about 55 of these things, so I don't want to spend too much time on this because it'll take a long time. But number one here, tank up and snow tank safety stand in place. You definitely want to have the safety stand in place when you're working on the machine, doing any kind of checklists. If you don't have a, a maintenance stand, the maintenance stand, I'm going to call it the maintenance stand that, that allows you to jack the tank all the way up and still support it. If you don't have one of those, you can make one out of piping or order one through Zamboni. Nevertheless, anytime you're working on a machine, you want that safety stand in place. All right, number two, kit ignition and security possession. Definitely a good call if you're working on the augers or any kind of mechanical things. You don't want someone to accidentally start the machine up and firing it up and get your hands caught in there. Number three, exhaust system condition. Inspect your exhaust system from top, from basically the exhaust manifold all the way out to the exhaust pipe. Keen on the catalytic converter as well as the exhaust and the muffler because those are two things that can rust out really easy. Our 500, we actually had to replace the catalytic converter on it a number of times early on. I'm not sure if there's a problem with manufacturing or something. Haven't had an issue for a long time, but for first you know, five or six years, we had to replace the catalytic converter like twice. As well as look at any kind of bolts or welding joints where you get cracks or little pinholes in there. Just inspect your exhaust system. Fuel line condition, your fuel line, no matter if it's gas, propane, excuse me, gasoline or propane, inspect your fuel system, any kind of connections, make sure that your connections are tight, there's nothing leaky and there's nothing dripping and nothing pitching those lines that kind of can cause a kind of leak or anything. Number five, fluid levels and connection hoses tank secure. So you know, make sure that your fuel levels are topped off, your propane, your gasoline, and make sure your connections, your hoses are fine. I kind of already kind of talked about that, fuel line condition, as well as your tanks are secure, especially the propane tanks at the back of the machine. That yellow strap that came with the machine kind of wore out on this and it doesn't really grab anymore, so we use a bungee cord instead. Number six, belts. Definitely inspect your belts. Make sure that they're tight as well as they're not worn. I'm really more specifically talking about on the engine itself. Check your belts. Have an extra belt on the shelf just in case one breaks. And it's probably something that you should replace sooner than later. Number seven, snow tank seal. Make sure the seal around the snow tank, the snow tank lid is tight and not worn or missing pieces. Number eight, hydraulic hoses and couplers. Definitely check all the hydraulic hoses, couplers, connections. Make sure there's nothing leaking, there's nothing loose. The machine does you know, rattle and vibrate as it drives, so you may get something to go loose over time. So definitely check those connections and anywhere where a hose could get pinched along the way on the body or on the frame. Number nine, battery and cables. You wanna make sure your cables are tight the connections onto your battery as well as not getting any kind of acid or corrosive built up on your battery. The 546 here, it's in a little case, so we haven't, you can't really look at it very easily. The 500 here, it's out and open. You can check them really quickly if you need to. But if you're having problems starting the machine, it seems like the battery's going dead, i check the connection to your battery cables first before I go replacing anything on that. All right, number 10, spark plugs. You should inspect your spark plugs. I don't think you need to do them every month. But every year, every six months, pull them out, take a look at them at the tip of the spark plug. It's kind of oily, you got some concerns going on there. You can take a look if it's a little dark or a little gray, kind of indicates if it's really rich or lean. At the same time, on this newer machine here, you have spark plugs and coil packs, but in the older 500 and a lot of older machines, you actually have cap, rotor, and spark plugs, excuse me, spark plug cables that should be also replaced. I'd say at least every two to three years tops, you should replace your spark plugs, cap, rotor, and cables, especially inspecting the cap and rotor because the rotor spins inside the cap. There's a lot of contact points that happen as it spins to hit each spark plug to send a signal or send a voltage to the spark plug for it to fire. So not only should you be checking the spark plugs, but the order machines, you should be looking at the cap, rotor, as well as the spark plug cables. Number 11, radiator and radiator hoses. Definitely a critical thing to check here on the machine. The cooling system is very important. Again, this is fuel power machines, battery power machines. You're not gonna have a, a cooling system on there 
for the engine. So make sure that your hoses are good. There's nothing leaking. Your hose clamps are tight. There's no cracked or worn hoses where something could start leaking in the future. It's probably best to the to flush your radiator system at least every other year, if not once a year, just to make sure everything's clean inside. Number 12, air filter. Our machines operate inside, so it's pretty clean air, but air filter is something you definitely want to check once a year, replace it every three years or so. And you're gonna find here, I'm gonna recommend that you replace everything the three to five year window. I don't know why, but it seems to be the three to five year window is where most things kind of last before you need to replace them. Leaf springs, you got leaf springs on your back wheels as well as your conditioner and your blade. So make sure your leaf springs are, are not sprung. It's gonna be kind of hard to tell if your leaf springs have been sprung or worn out. The ones on the conditioner and the blade should be replaced again every three to five years, depending on how old your machine is. And the ones that are on the back of the machine, we actually had a bolt break, I'll point out here. We had a bolt break and the machine got it kind of wonky there. It was kind of an odd thing to happen to have it break right there, but it did happen, just to point it out. So you definitely want to inspect those these springs in the back of the machine, make sure the bolts are good, there's no corrosion going on or anything's about to break. 14, brake lines. We don't really use the brakes very often here. It's kind of you know, higher stack transmission, but if you do have a machine like older Olympias, I think rely on the brakes a little more often than this machine does. But definitely check the brake lines, make sure everything's clear. It's going to be a really simple brake pathway from the brake pedal to the back wheels. I don't think there is brakes in the front wheels. I think it's just two rear brake wheels there, as well as your emergency brake. I, I would be wor worried about the emergency brake working than I w would you know, the foot brake. Just make sure that pedal is greased as well as nothing leaking or out of the ordinary. 15, fluid levels, your oil, your coolant, make sure those are topped off, good to go, as well as your hydraulic fluid. And those fluids there, you should have those things on hand. You should have extra oil, extra coolant, and some extra hydraulic fluid sitting on the side just in case anything happens. Number 16, hydraulic bypass, open or close. Hydraulic bypass, this allows you to open up and bypass the hydraulic system to allow you to push the machine off the ice or from one area to another if your motor is not working or I don't I think battery power machines still may have these things you have to, to discouple the, the machine's transmission from the power source to be able to push it that's how you do it and I already did a video on that so I don't want to get too deep into that 17 U joints you got U joints on your drive shaft front and rear so you get two sets for U joints on your drive shafts as well as U joints on your front wheels as they churn there to some U-joints to allow the wheels to churn and drive at the same time. So definitely inspect those, make sure you're greasing those things. You should be good to go on that one. 18, tires, condition, pressure, hubs, studs, and nuts. Definitely check the air pressure. It's totally important on your machine. 70 to 75 PSI, the sticker's right there. Can't read it, it's a little too far away. But check your air pressure, check your studs. Make sure your studs are not falling out. There's times where we can, we've added studs on on the tire because it's really hard to get a company to replace studs that's something that i think that we need to investigate here in the future the tread's always fine on our, our machine at least we only replace tires because the studs have worn out and we can't get any traction in the corners we try and turn the corners and get the blade kind of cranked down a little bit it's a little tough so check your studs your air pressure and make sure your lug nuts are tight your hubs that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse we I do have to place uh, a front wheel bearing on the machine here, so we'll get to that here in a few months, hopefully sooner than later. 19, board brush condition, arms and bushing. Again, that's something you gotta grease. There's like five grease points in that thing. Make sure it's greased, make sure nothing's loose, and also wipe your grease down. That's something that I'm not good on myself, I'm trying to get better at is wiping my grease down as I go, because there's a lot of grease points on there, a lot of grime. Definitely, you know, grease it, wipe it down. Check the arm, make sure nothing's loose, nothing's broken, no leaks in the hydraulic system, the manifold there for the hydraulic brush. Everything's good to go on that one. All right, 20, guy wheel condition. Again, that guy wheel is not really meant to use to drive. It's just meant to use as like a just in case type of thing. Like you don't want to constantly use it. It's just there, it's that lightly tap against the boards. It's not a tap, it's lightly rub against the boards if you have to, but generally you don't want to use the guide wheel. It's not so much a guide wheel as it is kind of like a safety backup mechanism so you don't crush the front of the nose into the boards as you drive them around. So it's not something you should rely on, but at the same time, make sure that's good, it's working, it's free, it's spinning, it's not getting hung up on anything. You should be good to go on that one. 21, 
Headlights and tail lights. We use our headlights when we drive outside at night, when we dump our snow, especially when we had the gate open. With all the shenanigans going on the last year, we had the gate closed. But we used to have people walking back and forth, driving back and forth. So we didn't really like it, but we couldn't really do nothing about it. So if the gate closed, you don't have a huge issue. But we drive outside with the lights on to dump snow, or have to drive down the, the driveway to dump snow in the wintertime because we have to, you know, snow gets kind of built up. I'll use the, the headlights on when I go outside, as well as a good indication that you're coming outside, as well as honking the horn, which I'll get to here in a minute. All right, 22, vertical auger movement and check guard. So you want to make sure your vertical auger is moving. It's not binding. There's no obstructions hitting those grease points, as well as get, grab that little fin. It's a little bit hard to, to shake the auger to check if the bearings are okay, but grab that auger fin on the top, give it a shake, and it's going to be real difficult to get to the bottom bearing, to be honest. I won't even try to shake the auger to see if it, the bearings are good. Just make sure you're hitting those grease points. Replace them, you know, five years. It should be good to go. Check guard means make sure those rich-friendly plates are in place or whatever plates that you have. Make sure those plates are in place covering the auger and make sure all the auger guards are in place for the vertical one as well. Number 23, lift conditioner to observe blade and runner condition. So you can be inspecting your blade. You should be changing that thing once. I mean, sometimes every other week in the slow season. If you're doing it every other week, you know, check the blade for chips or excessive rust or pitting. But if you're changing it once a week, twice a week during the busy season like we do when we got Western and the Blazers going, or you know, double headers in a, a weekend stand, changing it twice a week. But check the blade for chips or, like I said, excessive rust. Same thing with the condition of the runner. I mean, you're going to know that if something happened when you drop the conditioner down and do a cut, you're going to see a little groove in the ice. And that's you know I've seen that before. I try to sneak something past me, chip a blade or or clip the threshold or something, and they don't say something. It's like I, I know I can see it. When checking the runner itself, you want to start from the back of the runner and work your way forward so you don't nick yourself on the blade. And just run your finger on it. Like you use your phone like I do and I take pictures or whatever or video. Just kind of make sure there's no burrs and use a file there to to file the burr off and you should be good to go. And as far as the blade, like I said, you'd be changing it quite often anyway. If we're going long periods of time without changing your blade, just make sure it doesn't get excessive rust and pitting at the end because the blade does kind of break down a little bit at the tips if you lose a little bit too long. And number 24, conditioner lift arm and bushings. You want to inspect your lift arm and your bushings. I have an extra lift arm here. I'll throw a picture up for our old lift arm. We had to replace it in the 500 because the holes got kind of yoked out. There's a lot of play and slop on that lift arm caused a little waving the ice. And since we replaced the lift arm, we, the waviness went away. So definitely want to inspect the lift arm the bushings, it's nothing too much you can expect other than you want to grease them once a week. There's six bushings, three on each side. You want to make sure you're greasing them and replacing them three to five years tops. Again, if your machine's six month operation, you probably go five years, but every three years, if you're a 12 month operation, you should be looking to replace those lift bushings because you don't want any damage done to your conditioner, those yokes, or the lift arm itself. The, the, the bushings are for the bushings kind of take up the tension and the force, the down force on the machine with those bushings. So you definitely want to grease them and replace them and you should be good to go. Number 25, snow breaker condition. That's very important because that snow breaker, there's a bolt that kind of holds the snow breaker to the handle, if it's automatic or not. If that bolt falls off, that snow breaker will fall right to the ice and you can run it over and bent it, things like that. So you want to make sure that bolt is nice and tight as well as the breaker itself is not bent or on anything because you won't need it, especially if it's automatic or I guess it doesn't matter if it's automatic or manual, but you want it to go up and down nice and easy. You don't want any kind of getting hung up on anything, getting caught anything. So just make sure it's in good shape, nothing's bent. And again, that bolt that's holding the breaker onto the handle is there because again, it falls off, you get some bad times ahead of you. 26, blade adjustment wheel. Make sure your blade wheels is spinning really good. You got a zert on the blade bearing as well as underneath the conditioner, there is another zert where the mechanism slides up and down the screw there. So make sure you, you grease both those things and your blade wheel bearing is in good condition. If the blade wheel is really hard to churn, that's something you may want to look at. 27, towel in squeegee condition. Make sure your towel is clean. You can wash the white towel, but you can't really wash a black towel. I've tried to do that before. It doesn't really turn out very good. So if the towels get dirty, wash them, put a new one on there. I prefer the black towel. You probably get a year out of each one before we have to replace them and get grime and grease on them as well as your 
squeegee. The squeegee makes sure there's no cracks or tears. Because that squeegee is really important. I think it's really, uh, it's like the unsung hero or underrated as far as, people always talk about the water and the blade, but they never talk about the squeegee. If that squeegee is not there, you know, the water and blade can only get you so far. So I think it's, it's a very important thing to look at to make sure your squeegee is in good condition. Number 28, flood pipe condition. Getting the spreader bar back there in our old 500. When we were using it a little while ago, I could tell that the water wasn't coming out as quickly as it does in the newer 546. So I think there's some rust in there I gotta clean out. Maybe a future video, I'm gonna pull that, the spreader bar out and clean it out. Cause I'm sure there's a lot of rust in there restricting flow. So go in and look at your flood pipe condition to make sure you got good distribution coming out. Number 29, horizontal auger movement and condition of bearings. So you wanna inspect those bearings Make sure they're not loose. You grab the end of the auger shaft closest to the bearing on either side of the auger shaft and give that auger shaft a good shake. And if there's a lot of movement there, that means your bearings are loose. You need to replace those bearings. And I recommend to place those bearings every three to five years, depending on how much your machine's used, a six month or 12 month operation. I don't think you should go more than three to five years. It's because you don't want anything to break. Ounce prevention is the pound of cure. All right, number 30, gauges, steering wheel, horn. Start with the horn first. We definitely use our horn. I think I already mentioned that. When we pull outside, we honk the horn. The gate being closed now, it's not a huge deal. When we back on the ice too, I like to give it a little couple of honks, especially if people are not paying attention during public skates. And there's a lot of people on the ice, not really sure what's going on before I back up, I hit the horn. Your steering wheel, you wanna make sure that spinner is nice and tight, everything's good. The bolts that are holding the steering wheel on too is tight. That spinner gets loose every so often. The little ball that you use to move the steering wheel around, that gets loose every so often. Go ahead and get that tightened and make sure your wheel's not bowed out or anything or anything's wrong with the steering wheel. As far as the gauges go, there is a couple of gauges on there you definitely want to look at. Besides the tachometer, you got the coolant temp and oil pressure. Those things should always be monitored, the needles, so to say, as well as the voltage of the battery. But I think the, the oil pressure and coolant temperature are the two more important ones as well as the lights there down below the four lights one's oil pressure the second one is coolant temp then you got battery voltage as well as the last one right there is for your oil filter i've never seen that one ever go on i'm going to say if that one goes on you're, you're way 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 overdue for a hydraulic filter change so we'll talk about the hydraulic filters here in, in a second if i haven't touched it on already blade bar number 31 Make sure there's no rust on your blade bar because you mount your blade to the blade bar. If there's any kind of rust or anything in the way, you're not going to get a, a nice firm. I don't want to call it a seal because you don't want the seal is not terribly important, like like seal keeping water out or anything like that. Just want to make sure that everything's nice and flush, so you get a nice mounted flush to the blade to the bracket. I'm sure, I'm explaining that very well, but just make sure there's no rust on the bottom of your blade bar and clean anything off if there, if there is. The conditioner leaf springs, you want to check those leaf springs for rust, make sure they're good operational older. It's kind of hard to tell if they've been sprung or worn out. I just replace ours every three to five years. Five years tops if you're like a six month operation. If you're full year round, you probably want to do them every three years when you do the lip bushings and the bearings. But also check the down pressure on those things once a month at the minimal once a season reassess the down pressure on the conditioner i think it's one and a half to three turns and the ones for the blade is four turns just recheck those if your springs are kind of old at least the ones in the conditioner one and a half to three turns you can crank them down two two and a half turns to make sure you have sufficient down pressure there but go ahead if it's been three to five years i'll look to replace those leaf springs in the conditioner right, number 33 auger flooding actually i looked this one up because i'm not sure exactly what it meant I throw a picture up here, but from I gather, auger flooding is the design of the auger itself, the distance between the fins, the shape of the fins, how they're shaped one way or other. Because if you look at the conveyor or the auger in the Zamboni, the horizontal one, they're opposed, so they're bringing snow inward. So it's just really the design of the auger and, and the shape of the fins and the distance between the fins and how tall the fins are. So we'll make sure that they're all in good condition, there's nothing bent. And that's pretty much about it. Just make sure it's spinning good, you know, as far as the bearings and there's no bends or bows in your auger and your auger fins. It should be good to go that one, number 33. Number 34, hour meter reading. Our only time I'd really check that is when I do maintenance of the machine, oil changes, greasing, anything I fix on the machine, I write down the hours. And it's really good if you're with your rink for a long time because you could see patterns evolve after 10 years. You could tell. After so many hours, I write down the date too. After so much time, 
like with the 500 here we had huge problems with the cooling system the electronic system on the cooling system the fan the relays the, the wiring harness would burn out so we kind of got a good indication of how long things broke okay it's been a couple years it's gonna break soon let's go ahead and order that just to have it here on the shelf so go ahead and uh, write down your hours anytime you're doing any kind of work on a machine all right 35 here volt meter i'm gonna look 35 36 and 37 on one here volt meter temperature and tachometer make sure those are all working we actually had our tachometer go out on the 500 a long time ago so we got a newer tachometer in but your volt meter and temperature those are things that you need to look at while you're doing your ice cuts and don't don't overlook it because it's really easy to forget about it because if nothing ever goes wrong, you're not going to look at it. And as well as make sure your, your idiot lights or your red lights are working. When you turn the machine on, there's two to the four lights are going to go on. Your oil and your cooling, those lights are gone as well as an audible alarm. But make sure those gauges are working, the audible alarm is working, and those red lights are working. So it's, a, it's the first thing that tells you that something's wrong with the machine. And when something's wrong with the machine, you gotta react right away. Number 38, water fill. I actually had to redo this one because I wasn't sure what to say at first. Water fill, I assume, is your ice making water and your wash water. So you wanna make sure those are both available, that your ice making water is at two temperature, as well as clean, and your hose is ready. No leaks or anything in the hose. It's a clean hose as well as your wash water hose is available for you too. 39, seat and armrest. Make sure your seat is secured, your armrest is secured, even for us because we kind of boosted your seat up. We used locking nuts, so it never came loose, but it's something that you definitely want to check. Again, it's a detailed circle check here. Give it a fine look on it. Make sure your seat's attached. If you have a worn out seat, if you got the money or yourself a new seat cushion, probably about to do that here real soon. 40. Poly water tank inspection. I kind of talked about that there a little bit, but make sure your tank, there's no holes in the tank. Clean your tank out. I'm not too sure. Go and comment below if you feel like I need to miss something on that. But again, you don't want any holes in your tanks. You don't want any debris in your tanks. So just take a look at it. Make sure everything's good there. 41, snow tank inspection. Again, inspect your snow tank. Make sure there's no snow in it, as well as make sure it's propped up with a safety stand. You're talking talk about the seal on the lid there. Make sure that's in good condition. The gasket. Other than that, you want to inspect your lid points on your tank where the lid lifts up. There's two grease points up there. As well as you got three sets on each side of the arm. You want to grease on your hydraulic rams there that lift the tank in the air. Just make sure everything's tight. There's nothing loose as well as everything's being greased and nothing in the tank that's going to cause any issues there. 42, brake and brake pedal inspection. We already kind of talked about that. But there's a little grease zert underneath your underneath uh, the platform there that you want to hit every week. Make sure that's greased. Other than that, you want to make sure it just, at least it's working. And it's kind of hard to know when it's working because when you take your foot off the, the pedal, it's going to stop anyway. So definitely just make sure your emergency brake is working by parking it on the hill and because it will roll in neutral. The machine will kind of roll a little bit on the hill so we engage a safety brake, emergency brake to make sure it doesn't roll down the hill while you're washing it out. But just make sure your brake and brake pedal is there, nothing's broken and everything's being greased. 43, ice making water and wash water valves. I already did a video on replacing the valve on the ice making valve. You just want those things to be leaking. That's a basic, basic thing. You want to make sure that they close all the way and open all the way and when you do close it, it's not leaking, it's not dripping water in the back here because you can fill your tank up and by the time you come back it's all on the floor so make sure your valves are are operational and working and they open and close properly 44 step area clean and clear that's important sometimes i put my glasses down there when i'm working on things i've stepped on my glasses so you want to make sure you keep your step area clean and clear the handles that you grab onto the black handle on the left and that little handle there on the right make sure those things are tight and good to go and watch where you step when you get on the machine it's really easy to slip on there when you're trying to slip on a machine control levers make sure your control levers are operational and not bent that the little finger that points down to prevent the augers that going in reverse are in the proper positioning i don't sure if i can add too much more to that there wash water pump number 46 make sure your pump's operational test it out make sure the electronics are working the wiring to it's working and the impeller itself again if you're gonna replace one go with the blue one the blue one is much more forgiven when if you have to if it happens to run dry for just a little bit but make sure your wash water pump 
as well as the basket is clean, everything's operational. All right, number 47, conveyor dry belt and chain. So pull that side cover off, the safety cover off there, inspect your chain and your belt. Now the chain drives the auger and the belt drives the wash water pump, but they're both driven off the same hydraulic motor. So check the deflection on your belt and chain, as well as spray some chain lube on that chain at least once a week, keep it nice and lubed. And check the sprocket, see how loose the sprockets are, even though it doesn't mention sprockets right here. I uh, check the sprockets, make sure if they're not loose, as well as check the sprocket teeth and see if they're worn at all. They start getting kind of, I don't know what how to describe it, but they get a funky shape to them. They don't like the, the teeth, doesn't bind a chain as well. So go and check your sprockets out, lube your chain, as well as check the deflection on your belt and chain, and you should be good to go for that one. 48. Inspect body condition and safety labels. You wanna go around making sure your body panels are nice and tight, nothing's loose, nothing's broken, paint, yeah, you know, you wanna make sure the machine looks good, as well as if you have any safety labels that are missing, or loose through Zamboni, slap them on there, that's a liability issue, you don't wanna get caught, you know, someone getting hurt and safety labels missing, and you can open yourself up to some liability. Last thing I say about the body itself, and something that I need to do better job at is wiping it down, cleaning it off, grease, grime, top to bottom, make sure you wipe your body down and keep it clean. All right, 489 hydraulic oil. I'm actually gonna lump 49 50, 51 together here because you got hydraulic oil, hydraulic filter, and another hydraulic filter because they're listed twice. I already talked about in the fluids of hydraulic oil. You just wanna make sure that you got hydraulic fluid on hand as well as there's hydraulic fluid in the machine. Make sure you check that side glass. It should be about, I think, halfway when it's cold, maybe a little bit below halfway when it's cold, then towards the top high end when it's warm. So it does fluctuate depending on how warm that fluid is. As well as the filters, changes every year. I know in my hydraulic filter video, I kind of said one to three years, depending on your use and things like that. And I've been told different things. I haven't even, I don't really want to get into who told me what, but it's change those things once a year to be safe. Three years tops hops on that one so again 49 50 51 oil filters check them out make sure you got those going there you should be good to go and these last ones are here the exhaust shield canadian model fire extinguisher beacon light backup alarm tire wash seatbelt all optional things i say with the options like your wash water your tire wash board brush tank light what else automatic snow breaker you pay for those things in some cases a lot of money especially with the board brush and the wash water systems those are like thousands of dollars to add on you want to make sure those things are working if you have it on your machine i know things you know add up and things are expensive but it's really it's really you'll get yourself in a worse situation if you do let things add up like i said you pay for the option you might as well make sure it's working if it's a wash water system the impeller has gone you know get a new impeller if something's wrong with your board brush tire wash like i said i fixed the tire wash system had a wire that's kind of shortened out there i got that going i just to say with any of these options you just want to inspect it and make sure it's working as designed if you need any parts or any worn parts check it out make a note of it order something make sure it's greased but with all of those accessories you pay for it use it inspect it that way you know when you go to use it it's going to be working when you want it. All right, there you have it. That's Zamboni's general and detail circle check. Again, if you don't have these in your shop book, you don't have an updated one, go to Zamboni.com, the resource center, and they'll be able to print you one up and put it in your shop book, and you should be good to go on that. They didn't really talk about intervals, but how can I say it? You want to do the general one probably every day or a checklist every day, and the detail one once a week, once a month. Probably depends on kind of how long your machine sits and how often you use it, as well as how old the machine is. The older the machine is, the more you should be inspecting it because more things are probably gonna go wrong with it. If your machine sits for you know, a week or a week and a half or a half a week, I don't know, I'm gonna imagine with NHL rinks when the team is gone, you have other events going on, the machine may sit there. So you wanna probably give it a good looks over every time you come to it, if it's been sitting there for a while. So how I kind of see it, you should be inspecting the machine every day, the general one and detail one, once a week, once a month depending on how often you're in your machine. If you're driving it every day, you're probably looking at it. And this is supposed to be used in conjunction of the grease logs. So you should be greasing your machine every day, week, and monthly anyway. So this is a good, just general, basic guideline. Again, with the electric machines, it doesn't really cover it. I'll throw the electric machine one up there. There is a checklist for the electric machine. Probably a little bit different as far as checking fluids in your battery, 
and checking your connections for your motors because I don't think the newer AC Zambonis don't have hydraulic motors that have electric motors. Correct me if I'm wrong. So go and check that out if your machine is a little bit different, a different model number. Because Zamboni says that it's not for, this is a general kind of guideline and it doesn't cover all machines, all models and all ranks. So it's, everything's a little bit different. So it's kind of why I created one for our rank specifically. As well as I see this checklist right here. This is a checklist the boss should be doing, the head driver should be doing, and that's why I created just a general checklist for the drivers because I should be look, doing most of the work because you know, I'm the Zamboni supervisor back here, boss man, that a lot of this falls on me. I'm not going to have the night drivers, the weekend drivers checking certain things, U-joints, grease and bearings and things like that. Certain bearings, yes, daily ones, but not get air in the machine and grease and U-joints and things like that. So. That Zamboni boss type stuff. So the second video I'm gonna present here is for just the drivers, so to say. A pre-inspection checklist, then you got your post and pre-run checklist. Not to say they have to do it every time, but it's just a kind of guidelines so they can look at, especially for new drivers. A lot of this extends to a new driver checklist, basically. Same thing with the closing procedure I got. It's basically a new guy closing procedure that got changed just to a closing procedure just to have it written down, point to it, and someone does it. Hey, it's here. I told you right here. So get her done. But anyway, in the second video, I'm going to present my checklist, the, the general checklist, as well as the pre and post run. Then the third video, we'll get to that start procedure I made for the new drivers right there. So go ahead and comment below again because comments make the channel better. My perspective is just limited. I do have some experience. I feel like I could comment on it because I have a little experience, but it is limited. I realize that. So your comments are definitely appreciated and wanted, at least on my part. You know, criticisms, goods, bads. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. That way I can improve and other people can improve too. So, but definitely appreciate your comments. So, throw them down there. But that's all I got for you guys today. Thanks for watching. As always, hope you learned something. Like the local ice man says, stay cool.